Welcome back to Great Day, Washington. This back to school season is so different this year as many students are learning from home. There's a larger emphasis on making sure that your child is aware of online predators. I spoke to Chris Hednagy, founder of the Innocent Lies Foundation, who has advice for parents on warning signs of suspicious activities and how to talk to your family about possible online threats. Okay, as we're talking about virtual and we've been doing this for the last few months, we wanna keep our kids safe. So what are some of the key online mistakes that kids make that expose themselves to predators? So uh, sadly right now, especially because of COVID and we're all working from home and that includes predators, um, we're on the internet just so much more. So they're everywhere, right? There are gaming sites. We've located predators on homework sites um, we've located predators anywhere that children gather and chat. That's where they are. So that's not a, that's not a mistake ch children make, right? That's just setting the tone for the scene that they're in today, which is really scary. But sometimes what kids do is they'll they'll trust that someone says I'm another 14 year old girl, and they'll say, Oh, okay, look, this person has the same problems, and they start to open up. And and a few of the chats that we've worked on with with cases, we've seen things like where a child will say. Yeah, well, at least I get a break when my mom goes to work at 8 p.m. You know, she works in this hospital. And now the predator knows when the child's alone. You know, they know when they have downtime. And maybe, and maybe it's not because they're going to come there, but they, they know that's the best time to get the child to do something they wouldn't do because there's no parental supervision in the house. So uh, it's telling little details about where your parents work, um, where, when they leave the house, where you go to school, what grade you're in, your address, what they do for a living – all of these little details help a predator to learn so much about you that they can then figure out where you live, you know, figure out your, your profile, what kind of things that you like and don't like, and that just helps them build a, a stronger relationship with the child. What should we be looking out for? What are some of the red flags that really should send off our attention? When, when I talk about this, that what's important to realize for parents, any parent watching this, that the signs of grooming a lot of times sound like normal teenage life, right? So we don't want to uh, as a parent myself, we don't want to hear these things and go, oh, my gosh, my child's being groomed, right? So we just need to hear the, the list of things but then realize that these are red flags. These are things that should make a parent go, I'm going to check on, on this child, right? Not, not just jump to the conclusion that something awful is happening. You'll see kids that just don't want to spend time with their in-real-life friends. They're constantly in their room. They're constantly attached to their device. They're constantly uh, being separated from – from things that are real. That's one indication that, hey, there may be a problem. The child you know, may be in a relationship online that could be dangerous. Um, groomers tend to give gifts to children. So a box shows up for your child. It could be something really expensive like a phone or, or a gaming system. And you may be, where'd you get that? Oh, a friend sent it to me. What, is, what does that mean? What kind of a friend, right? Yeah, and that, these things happen often with groomers. Another thing is you'll see, um, and I'm not naming any games. There's not one game that's more dangerous than another, but like I said, predators go to where the kids are. So kids are online playing Fortnite and other online gaming networks and predators go to those gaming networks. So if you see them chatting with groups of people, Hey, who is that person? Oh, it's a friend. Where do you know that friend from? Oh, they're, a, they're a Fortnite friend. Again, it doesn't mean that person's bad, but that should be a red flag where you say, well, if you don't know that, you never met this kid from school. You don't know who they are. Having that gaming system at a public place could save you a lot of headache. Yeah, so how, I mean, you, you asked the questions about the friends, but if we're noticing the isolation or we're noticing these gifts, what are some ways that we can ask without alarming them and without having them shut down and really want to open up to us? Yeah, I love that question because this is one thing as a parent we've all messed up. You see your child do something horrific you know they send a picture they should have never sent or they say you have a conversation that is your mind going oh my gosh why would my little girl say things like that right and as an initial reaction is you want to you know grab the phone smash it over your knee put a hole in the wall and screw what is wrong with you right that's the totally wrong thing to do uh just trying to say empathetically if we put ourselves in the position of the child for a second uh what, what happens if they really do that they may really feel embarrassed horrible terrible about them so they really feel like the dumbest person on earth and now as a parent if we say this is the dumbest thing i've ever seen someone do you're just reconfirming all their negative feelings the chance of them talking to you it, it's gone they're not going to do it so as hard as it is if we got to go in the room and punch a pillow and you know yell at the dog whatever but when you talking to that child it needs to be calm 
They need to feel reassured that you're going to be there to help them through the problem. And the goal needs to be to find out, is, is there a problem, right? So just because your child is chatting with people online doesn't mean they're automatically predators. So f we need to find that out. And age-appropriate conversation, right? So if you're talking with your 9-year-old, you may not say all the same things that you say to your 15-year-old or 16-year-old. So age-appropriately explaining to them, hey, look, I saw this news program on this, on this TV show, and they're talking about what's happening online, and predators are now in these areas. So if someone approaches you and starts asking you weird questions or wants to take a chat, and this is one of the other signs of grooming, they want to take this chat off of a public forum to a private forum. So they'll be in Fortnite, and they'll say, hey, do you have a kick count? Let's talk on kick, or let's talk on IGDMs, or let's talk on Facebook Messenger. And they'll try to move the chat to something more private so that way it's not they, – they get less risk of being caught. Telling your child these things, they may go, ah, dad, that's never going to happen to me. Like you're, you're overly worried. But then if it does happen, that mind trigger will go off, and they'll go, wait, dad, mom said this was going to happen. I need to talk to them. And if you make it welcoming, they'll want to talk to you. You mentioned monitoring on these websites. Are there some that you can recommend for us to take a look at? Uh, on, the, on our website, uh, innocentliesfoundation.org, we have two uh, PDFs that teach you how to monitor your kid's iPhone or Android devices. All right, if you are a parent, definitely check out the website, innocentliesfoundation.com for those monitoring tips and other information that can help stop the online predators in their tracks while kids are learning virtually from home. Some great ideas there.